For today's podcast, I decided to interview a few speech and debate students from the past and a few current speech and debate students to see what their experience in the program was like. Um, okay, so what was the most memorable, mo- memorable moment of your time in speech and debate? Wow, uh, the most memorable. My goodness. Um, I don't know that one stands out. I remember a lot of great bus rides back after tournaments, uh, just sort of enjoying the energy of everybody being all amped up after another LSH victory. Uh, and yeah, having a, a lot of good times with all of my friends who did speech and debate. Huh, that's cool. Um, what has speech and debate taught you about the real world or what skills has it given you that you've been able to use it later in your life? So I am now a lawyer, and so public speaking is a big part of my job, and I feel like a big part of the beginning of my training in public speaking was in speech and debate. Um, I was actually asked yesterday at a law school kind of how, how does a lawyer become good at speaking in court, and the answer is practice. And so for me, that practice began as a freshman at Loyola, uh, doing my first uh, Lincoln Douglas debate round, and it's really continued ever since. Oh, interesting. Um, so, if you could give advice to a new speech or debater, what would it be? Lean into it. The speech and debate is more fun the more of it you do, the more you practice. And it's all about kind of enjoying that experience of. Um, practicing with your friends, riding that bus, enjoying the rounds, uh, and and just living in that moment and, and soaking up as much of that experience as you can. Okay, so um, what is your favorite part of speech and debate? Like, what was your favorite part overall? So for the event that I did, I really liked reacting to judges' questions on the fly. You know, that's a big part of LD is uh, just – sort of getting up there and and, uh, making a presentation, reacting to what the other uh, debater said, not knowing what they're going to say before you go in, Uh, trying to come up with a convincing argument um, with the preparation that you did before, but not knowing how the round is going to go once it starts. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's so weird. You were in high school and I wasn't even born yet. (laughs) What was the most memorable moment in speech and debate? Um, I have two. Probably either being in the hotel room for state for freshman year and just (laughs) making up my own little funny impromptu speeches, but like mixed with HOI, so it was like a funny little impromptu speech about anything. Or um, winning state freshman year. It was pretty fun. (laughs) Okay. What has speech and debate taught you about the real world? Um, okay. So especially this season, it taught me that some people are just really misogynistic. Yeah. <laughs> and that even women, like, don't allow other women to speak their opinions. And it's really odd, but oh well. And it's also taught me that sometimes morals compromise when you want to win, <laughs> which yeah. is bad. Um, I'm definitely at fault for some of that, (laughs) about changing parts of my speech because I was afraid that misogynistic women wouldn't like it. Um, But overall, I think that it's taught me that you do have a voice and you can use it for anything you want and still, like, accomplish funny things or things that you want to do. That's interesting. So if you could give advice to a new speech or debater, what would it be? Um, I... I think it'd be that it's not actually as scary as you think. At least, like, speech isn't, like, there's a lot of people in your rounds that you'll make friends with or that, like, even some people who you won't like their speech or you'll not find them very funny, at least for HOY. Like, you'll still make friends and you'll still have, like, a positive overall experience and, like, a 10-minute speech in front of a judge you don't know is not actually as scary as it seems. So, yeah. Okay, so what is your favorite part of speech and debate? Is it, like, conceited if I say winning? Um, 
honestly, that's mine. So Loki, it's winning. <laughs> it's like it's like um, the award ceremonies, and you're all lined up. Like final finalists are lined up, and they're calling your school one by one. You're like, oh my gosh. And then best moment ever is when they get to number two and they don't say your school, and you're like, yes, I won. <laughs> yeah, that is honestly my favorite part. Yeah. Too, so. <laughs> Okay, so what was the most memorable moment in speech and debate? Honestly, <laughs> it was probably when Noah lost um, in the finals. It was really depressing, and I don't think I'm going to forget about that, just how depressing that was. But the happiest thing that I remember from that is um, probably going over to state and being with all my friends and everything. Nice. So what has speech and debate taught you about the real world? the real world man people are mean that's what it's taught me about the real world i don't know people are cutthroat i mean me and cole tried to dq a team noah and brian got dq'd what team did you try to dq <laughs> what was it it was the uh no it was the same it was great fall central we tried to because they ran a new case oh okay so if you could give any advice to a new speech and debater what would it be um, don't care about what people think about you. I went into freshman year, and I was really scared to give speeches and everything. You know, I was doing policy, or am I doing policy? I don't know. But, you know, I did a new event. I've never done, like, that much public speaking before. I was really worried about, like, how I sounded, what I was saying. But, you know, I just went into this year, and I thought, I don't really care what people think. And, honestly, I did a lot better. So, I think that's what advice I give. You did better? I did better. A lot better. I speak for nice. not 23 and 22s. Okay, so what is your favorite part of speech and debate? <laughs> I think the people. Um, you know, there's a guy named Samuel Kyle in there. You know, he, I, I don't know if you heard, but that amazing drum hit was by Samuel and it was it's just you know the talents that the people have in Speech and Debate are really impressive and that's what I just love about it it's the people and how talented they are okay so I'm going to ask you a few questions okay. and now you have to answer them so what was the most memorable moment in Speech and Debate my most memorable moment was probably that first time I got first place in, I think, Polson. I think Polson was that meeting I got first place in. Yeah. But it was just really sweet because, like, I didn't expect to get first place. And I, well, I knew, like, because the meet before that, there were only, like, five kids there. And I knew that, like, and I hadn't had, that was the first time I had mine memorized. So I was really excited to just get out there and go do it. Um, so I think that was really special and really fun. Um, but I mean, close second is just like hanging out with everybody in the hotel. I don't know. It was just fun to do yeah. the team. Yeah. So, what has speech and debate taught you about the real world? Um, it's taught me a lot about like, you know, you you always think that there's this is kind of tied into how I won that first place, but there's always going to be someone. You got to keep pushing and tr working harder because I think I got those two first places, and I was like, man, I think I'm doing really good. But then. You know, we got to those B meets, and there were people that were better than me, and I had to work a little bit harder. Um, yeah. And so I think that was something I hadn't really considered, because I was unprepared that the B kids would be so much more focused on MPA than, um, like, the AA or A kids. But it was just, you know, it was kind of like a wake-up call when we got to those meets, and I had to work a little bit harder um, and really try and round. So. Nice. So if you could give any advice to a new speech and debater, what would it be? I would just say, like, don't be nervous to go out there. Everybody's, you know, and it's not... It's not, everyone's like, everyone's with everyone, and everyone's supporting everyone, so you don't have to be worried about failing or doing something wrong. You're there to learn, and speech and debate is just a fun time. So, and you build a good community. I would recommend everyone at least consider trying it. Because um, I know I made a lot of friends doing speech and debate, so. Yeah, so what was your favorite part of speech and debate this season? My favorite part was probably just, I gotta say, like, I really loved, um, state just because it was fun to be with the whole team for a couple of days and just like i mean we all had fun and even though it and well we won, i mean we won but you know we had some there were some bumps in the road but just hanging out with the whole team and being a part of that family i think at state so yeah i think a community our speech and debate community is really important yes yeah.
When did you do during, when did you do speech and debate? Like between what years? If you can remember. Um, I can remember. I would have started in fall of 2011 and would have finished in spring of 2015. Okay. Or winter of 2015. Okay, so now I'm just going to ask some questions. So, what was the most memorable moment in speech and debate for you? Um, the most memorable moment was my sophomore year when I got to go to state alongside Ian and Nick Deskamps, and we all three competed in the Sabrinian. And we went um, one, two, three at state with Nick taking first, me taking second, and Ian taking third. Oh, that's so cool. What events did you do? Um, we all did a Sabrinian. Oh, yeah, I heard about that, actually. Our coach was telling us about that. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, what has Speech and Debate taught you about the real world? It's definitely let me find an outlet to express my creativity in a way that I wouldn't in everyday circumstances. It has always maintained, a le- or it's always helped me maintain a level of preparation, <clears throat> preparation in public speaking, no matter what the situation. Um, and I think that it really has helped me understand that communication is a really important and effective tool to get wherever you want to go in life. And it doesn't matter what type of communication that is, whether it's written or oral, but if you can use it effectively, you're going to be successful. Oh, that's a really good response. That's like, I think that's the best response we've had so far. So if you could give advice to a new speech or debater, what would it be? Definitely don't be afraid to try. I think because you're vulnerable when you're participating in public speaking events, especially events that require levels of creativity like um, humorous oral interpretation, serious oral interpretation, or even impromptu, that it's okay to find that balance between being funny and creative, but also being professional and maintaining that level of excellence that we demand at Loyola Speaking Date. Mm, that's okay. So this is the last question. So no, you're fine. what is your favorite part about speech and debate? Like what overall in your four years of doing it or however long you did it? Um, my favorite part was definitely the fact that, you know, I was in the classroom every day, all day. Then I was on the soccer field or the basketball court, the running track, and all of those fueled a passion of mine. But I didn't know I had a passion for speaking and doing speech and debate until I started doing it. And it definitely fueled something in me that I care about, that motivated me, that I never would have known had I never done it. Um, I think it's just a different... It's an outlet outside of sports and school where you're still being competitive and you're learning different things about yourself that you would never learn otherwise. Okay, thank you for interviewing with us today. Okay, Um, what events did you do? I was in Lincoln Douglas debate. Okay. What years did you do speech and debate from? Like between? Yeah, 2001 until 2004. Nice. Um, okay, so what was the most memorable, mo- memorable moment of your time in speech and debate? Wow, uh, the most memorable. My goodness. Um, I don't know that one stands out. I remember a lot of great bus rides back after tournaments, uh, just sort of enjoying the energy of everybody being all amped up after another LSH victory. Uh, and yeah, having a, a lot of good times with all of my friends who did speech and debate. Huh, that's cool. Um, what has speech and debate taught you about the real world or what skills has it given you that you've been able to use it later in your life? So I am now a lawyer, and so public speaking is a big part of my job, and I 
feel like a big part of the beginning of my training in public speaking was in speech and debate. Um, I was actually asked yesterday at a law school kind of how, how does a lawyer become good at speaking in court? And the answer is practice. And so for me, that practice began as a freshman at Loyola uh, doing my first uh, Lincoln Douglas debate round, and it's really continued ever since. Oh, interesting. Um, so if you could give advice to a new speech or debater, what would it be? Lean into it. The speech and debate is more fun the more of it you do, the more you practice. And it's all about kind of enjoying that experience of um, practicing with your friends, riding that bus, enjoying the rounds, uh, and and just living in that moment and, and soaking up as much of that experience as you can. Okay. So um, what is your favorite part of speech and debate? Like, what was your favorite part overall? So for the event that I did, I really liked reacting to judges' questions on the fly. You know, that's a big part of LD is uh, just sort of getting up there and, and uh, making a presentation, reacting to what the other um, debater said, not knowing what they're going to say before you go in, um, trying to come up with a convincing argument um, with the preparation that you did before, but not knowing how the round is going to go once it starts. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's so weird. You were in high school and I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right.